வெல்கம் டு ஏடிசிஎம் த எமர்ஜென்சி மெடிசின் சேனல் டுடே லெட் அஸ் டிஸ்கஸ் அபவுட் இன்ஃபெக்டிவ் ஆண்டோகார்டைட்டிஸ் ஆர் இன்ஃபெக்ஷன் ஆஃப் கார்டியாக் வேல்ஸ் இட் இஸ் அ மைக்ரோபியல் இன்ஃபெக்ஷன் ஆஃப் த கார்டியாக் வேல் ஆர் இண்டோத்திலியல் லைனிங் இட்ஸ் ஆக்சுவலி ஆக்சுவலி எ வெஜிடேஷன் தேட் மீன்ஸ் எ மாஸ் ஆஃப் பிளேட்லெட்ஸ் ஃபைப்ரின் மைக்ரோ ஆர்கானிசம் காலனிஸ் and some inflammatory cells so that forms a mass on the cardiac valve and it can produce obstruction or leak or a, a source of infection which can spread throughout the body the predisposition uh, predisposing factors for uh, infective endocarditis are vst pda pulmonary stenosis tetralogy of fallot coagulation of aorta in rheumatic heart disease it is mr ar as mitral stenosis is not routinely uh, develop infective endocarditis so ms and ast they are relatively immune to infective endocarditis prosthetic valves can have infective endocarditis very commonly iv drug abusers can develop infective endocarditis on right side of the heart mainly tricuspid valve infective endocarditis marantic endocarditis means non infectious vegetations it can see in malignancies chronic diseases like sle and all now we'll see the risk for infective endocarditis there are some condition which are high risk for infective endocarditis like prosthetic valves previous history of endocarditis complex cyanotic congenital heart diseases complex congenital heart diseases after correction pda coagulation of aorta moderate risk uh, infective endocarditis are vst acquired aortic and mitral valve lesions like ar as mr ms uh, the incidence of infective endocarditis is very rare mvp can be a risk factor for infective endocarditis if the patient develops mr mitral regurgitation bicuspid aortic valve also sometimes develop infective endocarditis organism which routinely produces the infection on the valves native valve endocarditis streptococcus viridans and hysic organism like hemophilus hemophilus actinobacillus cardiobacterium ekanella kingella so they this group of organism are together called as hysic group streptococcus bovis staphylococcus aureus including mrsa prosthetic valve staphylococcus diphtheroids gram negative bacilli in intravenous drug abuse it, it is mainly staph infection from the skin Uh, which is contaminated from the skin and uh, directly in, invades the blood vessels and it reaches the right side of the heart now we can see the clinical features of infective endocarditis like any infection any other infection patient can have fever with chills on auscultation you can get new murmurs or changing the quality of murmurs cardiac complications like valvular insufficiency like regurgitation of valves and cardiac failure clubbing can be there rapidly uh, formed clubbing with painful uh, lesions cutaneous embolism that is janvier lesions on palms and soles janvier lesions are common in acute infective endocarditis they are micro abscesses with neutrophil infiltration of capillaries neurological complications like embolic stroke intracerebral hemorrhage brain abscess and other complications like patient can have sometimes seizures stroke and all metastatic in, a, a infection can produce vertebral osteomyelitis septic arthritis psoas abscess like different uh, 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 areas patient can have infections other clinical features like splinter hemorrhages over nails petechial rashes peripheral pulses can absent if there is an obstruction to the peripheral flow through because of embolism patient can have stroke 
Splenomegaly is one of the important findings in like any other infection here also you can get splenomegaly with splenic rub, osseous nodes, painful tender swollen nodules of the pulp of the fingers, osseous nodules commonly seen in patients with infective endocarditis with uh, during the pre-antibiotic era but nowadays it is not very common because immediately after making an infectious disease diagnosis we routinely start antibiotic so most of the time it may not be seen raw spots like circular retinal hemorrhages with white center hematuria can be there in some patients now you can see splinter hemorrhages Janeway lesions osseous nodes Roth spots. So these are the common uh, findings which was seen previously. Nowadays we don't see this type of uh, lesions because the early antibiotic treatment uh, will disappear most of the complications in infective endocarditis. But if the patient does not receive antibiotic, then again you can get all these things. Cardiac complications mainly uh, it involves the uh, valves it can produce abscess around the valve then prosthetic valve can get damaged it can produce stuck valves or regurgitating lesions conduction abnormalities cardiac failure so all these things are uh, most important conditions neurological complications like patient can have stroke or any other neurological complication because of uh, uh, septic embolism to the brain other organs also suffer due to embolism like splenic infarct, kidney infarct, uh, mycotic aneurysm that means infective aneurysm on the blood vessels can rupture any areas in the brain, osteomyelitis can occur. So these are the, some of the findings we have already discussed, I am not going to the details of these uh, clinical findings again. Now there are two important terminologies we should understand one is acute endocarditis other one is subacute sub endocarditis. Acute means it is a rapid onset disease patient can have cardiac damage, cardiac failure, high degree fever with chills, patient can have spread of infection to any other part of the body and uh, patient may uh, develop uh, uh, high mortality in this type of infection if not treated properly. Subacute endocarditis patient can have mild fever, indolent course, slow progression, less complication. Sometimes these subacute infections can present as PUO also. And uh, when we treat PUO, many doctors start antibiotic without knowing the exact diagnosis. If you continue antibiotic, patient remain very low symptoms even when we are not able to completely treat the infection, but the symptoms are very, very uh, less in that, that type of patients. So, some patients are having low levels of clinical features that can be called as subacute endocarditis. Now, there is a criteria uh, given for infective endocarditis. I am not going to the details of criteria, but two important things are there in the criteria. One is we must have a positive blood culture to diagnose infective endocarditis. Other one is we should have evidence of uh, infective endocarditis by echocardiogram either by uh, routine echocardiogram or transesophageal echocardiogram. Minor criteria are predisposing factors like pre previous heart disease, previous valvular disease, previous valve replacement and intravenous drug abuses, high degree fever more than 30 deg 38 degrees Celsius, major arterial embolism, septic pulmonary infarct, mycotic aneurysm, intracerebral hemorrhage, conjunctival hemorrhage, Janeway lesions, immunological phenomena like glomerular nephritis, osseous nodes, rod spots, rheumatoid factor positivity, microbiological evidence like positive blood culture. So, most important among all these things is we should have a clinical suspicion and we should get a positive blood culture. We will discuss about the blood culture afterwards. And evidence of a cardiac lesion by transthoracic trans or 
transesophageal echocardiogram now how to take a blood culture when we suspect infective endocarditis we have to take minimum 3 blood culture sets two bottles per set that means we should take six samples separated from each other by at least one hour should be obtained from three different sites over 24 hours that means we have to take the sample from different sites in different time of the day so that means we want to confirm the same organism in all the cultures and it is spreading throughout the day so that is very very important we have to take minimum 6 samples of blood culture in three different times and from three different places so we have to take 20 ml of blood for each culture if the blood culture is negative two or three additional blood culture samples should be obtained and if the during the treatment because it's a prolonged treatment we have to repeatedly take the sample to prove that the antibiotics are working and the bacteria is completely disappearing from the blood many patients can have negative blood culture because we know that sometimes only uh, we can pick up only bacterial infection we may not be able to pick up fungal infections uh, in infective endocarditis so uh, sometimes blood culture can be negative sometimes because of previous treatment so patient may be receiving lot of antibiotics then also uh, blood culture can be negative otherwise also in some patients like subacute endocarditis we may not be able to pick up anything from the blood culture so three samples from three different sites each set should have two uh, two uh, samples per set so at least six samples we have to take now ecg can be taken to diagnose arrhythmias or cardiac blocks echocardiography normally we take trans thoracic echocardiography sometimes because of tachycardia or poor echo window we will not be able to pick up by trans thoracic echo cardiography sometimes we will be uh, picking up a small lesions or uh, insignificant lesion in the trans thoracic echo cardiography but if we strongly suspect infective endocarditis we have to go for trans esophageal echo cardiography that is having very high sensitivity than trans thoracic echo cardiography once you make a diagnosis of infective endocarditis we have to empirically treat the patient because if we don't treat immediately if we wait for the culture reports after 48 hours it can destroy the valve completely if it is a uh, artificial valve the function of the valve itself can be uh, damaged by the organism or the mass which is produced by the organism so you can give for suspected streptococci penicillin g 2 to 3 million units for hourly for 4 weeks plus gendamicin 1 mg per kg im or iv 8 hourly for 2 weeks or ceftriaxone 2 g per day iv single dose for 4 weeks whatever it is here what we are covering we are giving one antibiotic for gram positive one antibiotic for gram negative penicillin resistant cases when we are suspicious ceftriaxone or vancomycin enterococci penicillin plus gendamicin sharp vancomycin because we are thinking about mrsa here that's why we are starting vancomycin 15 mg per kg iv bd for 4 to 6 weeks asic organism ceftriaxone 2 g iv od for four weeks but in empirical therapy it is not possible to make a diagnosis of all this bacteria so most of the physicians prefer to give one good gram positive coverage one good gram negative coverage like you can take the last two columns we can give vancomycin which covers gram positive including mrsa 
and septriaxone which covers most of the gram negative infections. So, we can chart any other drug which have similar properties, but these are the recommended drugs we can uh, go for uh, another uh, third generation cephalosporin instead of septriaxone, but these are the recommended drugs. Now, follow blood cultures, the initial antimicrobial response to treatment should be assessed by repeating blood culture after 48 hours. That is very, very important. We have to see whether the organism is coming down or it is not coming down. Some organism respond very fast and very quick to the antibiotic regime. Normally, we have to continue the treatment for 4 to 6 weeks. So, that is very important. These patients require prolonged treatment with antibiotic. Now, another important thing is prophylaxis. Some of the patients who is having previous cardiac lesions require infective endocarditis prophylaxis. So, prophylaxis is indicated in prosthetic cardiac valve. That is when we are doing some procedure in patient's body. So, there is a chance of contamination and from there patient can develop infective endocarditis. So, thinking that in some of the conditions we have to start antibiotics like prosthetic cardiac valves, previous infective endocarditis history, unrepaired cyanotic congenital heart disease, completely repaired congenital heart defect with prosthetic metallic valve or metallic devices during first six months after the procedure, repaired congenital heart disease with the residual defects at the site or adjacent to the site of prosthetic patch or prosthetic device, cardiac transplant patients, cardiac valvulopathy, rheumatic heart disease with prosthetic valves or uh, damaged valves. So, all these things we need to give infective endocarditis prophylaxis. So, during procedures like dental procedures which involves manipulation of gingival tissue, periapical region of teeth or perforation of the oral mucosa, respiratory tract procedures like individuals who undergo invasive procedures in the respiratory tract like biopsy, tonsillectomy, adenoidectomy. Prophylaxis is not required for bronchoscopy unless there is an invasive procedure like, uh, which involves incision or tissue biopsy. GI or urinary tract procedures. Many of the patients may not require uh, infective endocarditis procedures. But if there is a manipulation in the tract, we need to give infective endocarditis prophylaxis. So, if we are uh, manipulating the skin, then staphylococcal and streptococcal prophylaxis should be given with vancomycin or clindamycin. Now, infective endocarditis prophylaxis for dental respiratory tract esophageal uh, procedures like we think about gram positive organism, amoxicillin 2 gram orally 1 hour before procedure or ambicillin 2 gram IM or IV within 30 minutes before the procedure, penicillin allergy patients, clindamycin 600 milligram, azithromycin 500 milligram. Clarithromycin 500 milligram, cephalexin, cephatroxid 2 gram, 1 hour before the procedure. Penicillin allergic, but patient cannot take orally. Clindamycin 600 milligram, cefazolin 1 gram. Like that, we can give most of the conditions above the diaphragm, we can give gram, gram positive coverage. Geneta urinary and GI procedures, high risk patients, we give ampicillin plus gentamicin, high risk patients allergic to penicillin, vancomycin plus gentamicin. So, below the diaphragm we have to mainly cover gram negative, gram negative coverage. So, above the diaphragm gram positive, below the diaphragm gram negative. 
So most of the uh, time when we are thinking about infective endocarditis, you need to give antibiotic at least one hour before the procedure, 30, to 30 minutes to one hour the procedures. Single dose is required in most of the patients. So we have discussed about the choices of antibiotics in previous slide.